everyone for uh, another session on batch scheduling on Kubernetes uh, in the research and user group. Uh, so today we, we have Kevin and William um, uh, presenting on Volcano. Uh, the project has been around for quite a while these days, so I'm sure a lot of people have, uh, have used it or use it. So yeah, thank you very much, Kevin. Go. Go for it. Hello. Uh, yeah, you can you can start, Kevin. Yep. I just was just changing the permissions here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, while William is still trying to join, uh, I will start first. So um, thanks for uh, uh, inviting me. Um, I would like to uh, basically introduce Volcano, uh, how we deal with the uh, batch scheduling uh, today. All right, uh, so we, we all have kind of uh, background about the, the you know, uh, technical evolution that we, uh, in the early days, actually, the uh, HPC, big data, and also AI have different uh, software uh, stack to deal with their uh, problems. And, uh, and actually, uh, in the recent years, more and more people trying to, uh, you know, put the order kind of different workloads on top of cloud native uh, uh, infrastructure. And uh, from us, uh, we actually started uh, researching in the early time. Actually, the Volcano project comes from the uh, one of the sub project of Kubernetes called KubeBatch. So uh, we deal with the uh, uh, batch scheduling as well as provide um, the uh, job definition for uh, the batch workloads as well as uh, trying to uh, uh, resolve the uh, resource management issue with Volcano. And also in the recent year, uh, we have seen more and the more uh, users adopt uh, Volcano in their environment to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, manage uh, uh, batch workloads as well as online services. So, and also uh, good to see there are some people trying to uh, uh, use Volcano for uh, training and the inference workloads. So uh, Volcano, the project actually started as a, a standalone project in 2019 and donated to CNCF in uh, 2020. Uh, so far, it's an a incubating uh, project in CNCF and also we have kind of uh, 500 global contributors all over the world. And uh, a little bit uh, technical uh, uh, details. So uh, you can see this is the uh, very brief uh, Volcano architecture. Uh, and actually uh, Volcano uh, not only just to provide a scheduler to deal with the uh, workloads, but also uh, provide the uh, definition for job as as well as uh, provide definition for uh, queue management sort of things. Uh, from the uh, ecosystem part, we currently uh, support like TensorFlow, PyTorch, as well as the uh, OpenMPI and also uh, Spark, Flink, and uh, Ray. Uh, almost every you know well known uh, the computing uh, framework we. We provide the integration and the support. And uh, uh, for HPC and the uh, uh, AI and big data workloads, they are actually uh, you know, very uh, diverse in uh, different scenarios. So we uh, analyze the typical workloads and uh, uh, like the array job is uh, usually uh, used to reduce job submission time and around the um, same uh, program multiple times. Uh, as everyone know about the M MPI job, the uh, 
The main difference is that multiple uh, subtasks tasks are strongly related, and the uh, the the task can be uh, started only when all resources are uh, or are ready. Uh, uh, and the workflow job is mainly used to handle different uh, dependencies between tasks. And different uh, subtasks are uh, kind of apply for different resources. While uh, the big data workloads, they are usually they usually have a, a driver. As long as the driver's uh, resource requirements are met, the tasks can be uh, started. Then uh, you know start and uh, uh, numerous executors. The number number of the executors can be uh, elastically uh, expanded, and the uh, uh, it requires the ability of the data affinity in, in the scheduling uh, perspective. And for AI uh, training tasks. Um, uh, so take uh, TensorFlow as an example. Uh, it has parameter server and the worker uh, worker nodes, and the the, uh, the parameter server and the worker have have different resource requests. They have strong demand on the uh, network affinity uh, and the uh, for from the uh, scheduling perspective as as well as the, the accelerator uh, perspective. Um, and the the other one is about the uh, long long term long running services. Uh, for example, AI inference. Uh, there are multiple instances, and uh, uh, you know multiple instances require an anti anti affinity uh, scheduling uh, rule to increase uh, availability. And uh, so that's why we we are. Uh, uh, come up with the uh, job management in the volcano job uh, definition. Actually, we try to uh, to provide a unified abstraction uh, to satisfy to satisfy this different type of uh, workload. So, uh, the, in the volcano job, uh, you can see it actually support multiple um, pod templates to uh, make it. Uh, so we, we can make it uh, suitable for uh, defining both uh, like uh, TensorFlow parameter server as well as the worker nodes. And also uh, there are kind of uh, similar um, requirement in other uh, workload types. And um, uh, we also uh, kind of uh, provide a concept called plugins, uh, which is very useful uh, when people trying to uh, define uh, to run uh, the the workloads uh, with volcano job. For example, the the uh, the services in the plugin is uh, very useful for pod to pod communication, uh, and also like the the SSH plugin is very uh, useful for uh, MPI workloads. And also uh, we also define some of the policies. So uh, for users able to indicate uh, whenever uh, some uh, error status occurred during the uh, processing. So uh, also taking the uh, MPI uh, workload, for example, uh, we uh, we provide the mechanism, uh, we provide the, the plugin to uh, basically, uh, for users to indicate more uh, detailed information, so uh, it helps uh, the different MPI uh, pods to to kind of interact with each other during the during the uh, the the, pro, the the computing uh, time. And uh, also uh, the. Uh, the job flow is kind of newly introduced in, in recent releases. Uh, it's a kind of uh, lightweight workflow orchestration uh, abstraction, actually. Um, so uh, it supports uh, like if-else semantic uh, and also switch case uh, semantic. 
For example, as shown in the uh, the figure uh, on the right, if C runs uh, successfully, job E will be executed. Otherwise, job F will be uh, executed. At the same time, if it's uh, it, it also supports real time query of job and the uh, tasks, as well as error handling and uh, uh, strategies such as uh, uh, retry when uh, when it meets some timeout con uh, condition. So uh, this is uh, actually an example of JobFlow API, and you can actually configure the job through the job template and uh, specify the dependencies of the uh, job in JobFlow. Um, and uh, with the uh, besides the job management, we also uh, provide resource management. So this is a little bit more uh, aligned with the concept we do in the uh, traditional batch system. So uh, actually, we uh, added Q concept in uh, Volcano uh, for resource planning and the resource sharing. The Q is kind of uh, uh, cluster scoped uh, uh, object. Uh, it's decoupled with the namespace. So the queue uh, is mainly used to uh, share resources between between multiple tenants. For example, one queue uh, can map into a group in a company, and also you can match a specified kind of resource like GPU uh, for this queue in the cluster. With that, users are uh, allowed to configure different policy for different uh, uh, queue. It's very, uh, very helpful. So uh, uh, let's just uh, uh, give a little bit more uh, detailed about the queue uh, concept. And so uh, like the uh, in the in the Kubernetes API server, uh, the the users may uh, you know uh, create objects, create their workloads in different uh, namespaces. Uh, but that's kind of uh, from the quota from the namespace perspective. Um, actually, uh, in the scheduler part in the Volcano concept, you can you know, define. Uh, queue in a different uh, perspective and uh, for example different type of workloads with different uh, priority and uh, when uh, volcanoes are uh, trying to schedule the workloads uh, it will uh, kind of allocate the resource uh, based on the different weight of the queue and it will kind of uh, you know deal with the uh, Resource sharing among the among the different uh, priority, and the 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 benefit is that you can uh, when uh, you know you, you don't need to have enough resource in the in the cluster. You can just uh, queue everything you want to run uh, in the system. On the right, it's uh, uh, it's an example. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, basically, uh, the resource sharing is uh, based on the weight, and also um, some of the people may feel uh, that the kind of uh, sharing according uh, to the weight is kind of uh, not uh, helpful in when they are kind of planning their resources. So uh, the uh, Mean deserved the max and mechanism is kind of a uh, little bit different way. So uh, users are able to kind of define uh, like mean resources as well as the max and the deserved resource uh, for Q. And then uh, Volcano will automatically uh, uh, deal with the requirement to make sure uh, every Q uh, have the minimal resources uh, kind of uh, preserved for running uh, the workloads, as well as when, when uh, in the high uh, pressure um, situation, a queue is able to 
you know, uh, get more resource allocated uh, according to the like the capacity uh, capacity the max uh, definition, and the resource can be borrowed from the uh, from uh, the other queue. So uh, the scheduler will kind of guarantee the minimal resource uh, allocated for for that uh, for the other queue. Uh, and also, actually, we are uh, uh, we are exploring the path to uh, to implement the co-location and the over subscription uh, sub subscription. As we all know, that uh, more and more users are trying to uh, uh, improve the uh, resource utilization by co-locating different type of workloads. Uh, for example, big big data. Uh, and also the my uh, online running uh, online services. Uh, one of the challenge is to uh, you know to uh, to make sure the online service is uh, always available. So we need to kind of introduce priority for the workloads as well as implement the the QoS uh, mechanism for the underlying resource allocation and especially. Uh, you know, take the resources back when the online services uh, uh, need more uh, resource. Uh, hopefully, uh, this future will be uh, done in the uh, in the in the uh, recent months. Um, for the scheduling part, uh, actually, Volcano also implemented a, a lot of uh, scheduling algorithm that is very uh, useful uh, for the batch, batch workloads and uh, a lot of uh, algorithm are kind of uh, well known already in the in the uh, traditional uh, batch uh, system as we uh, all know uh, like gun scheduling is kind of uh, a very uh, important algorithm important mechanism to to uh, avoid uh, uh, the resource deadlock when there are multiple workloads trying to uh, trying to apply for our resources, and also the uh, task topology scheduling and the I/O aware scheduling are designed to uh, reduce the the the, the communication uh, the transition uh, transmission delay of the distributed chaining, and also. Uh, uh, with our test, the performance is improved by uh, thirty-one percent. The and also uh, the main resource feature is uh, designed to resolve the problem of resource competition between Spark driver and the uh, executor in uh, high concurrency scenarios. And also um, uh, another uh, algorithm that is very useful is the fair sharing and the preemption. So um, if you compare to the Kubernetes default scheduler, uh, we know it's a kind of uh, schedule part, part by part uh, all the time. And it's kind of uh, actually potentially uh, make the smaller part uh, easier to success because uh, because the the smaller amount of uh, resources is always easier to get. So with the fair sharing uh, algorithm, and because Volcano is a batch scheduler, it will kind of uh, take a look at the uh, uh, all the jobs in the in the scheduling cycle, try to balance the resource allocation between different different jobs, uh, make sure the uh, uh, make sure that uh, every job can uh, try their best to get some uh, part of the uh, resources. Uh, the other case is that when some of the users submitted a very, uh, you know, big job with a lot of uh, part uh, included, it might uh, take most part of the uh, uh, resource in the cluster, and then the other workload may not able to get uh, to get resource 
So with the fair, uh, fair sharing, uh, it's also able to uh, deal with that. And uh, another one is about the uh, uh, SLA policy. So as we all know that uh, uh, the, uh, especially for the larger job, uh, it may not very easy to get scheduled. So on the, uh, take the left uh, figure shown as an uh, example. The mo in the, at the moment of T1, users submit a big job the job one with the uh, gun and the, the uh, small job job two the small job uh, it's quite easy to get a lot uh, resource allocated and the big job the job one uh, will keep pending due to uh, insufficient resource at the moment t2 uh, another new job the job three uh, submitted and they get allocated allocated the big Job, job one, keep pending due to insufficient resource, right? As the time goes on, the big job will uh, get uh, starving in, if the related resource always, uh, you know, cannot satisfy its gun and the user keeps submitting uh, small jobs. In the SRA uh, scheduling uh, mechanism, we allow, we allow uh, users to configure the uh, like their expect, uh, expectation uh, for the job, like uh, how long they want to, they are kind of, uh, uh, they want to wait. So, uh, so it, the scheduler will kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, impl uh, implicitly uh, increase the priority of the job in, inside the scheduler uh, when it, uh, when the job keeps waiting so make sure it will uh, finally get scheduled before the the user indicated deadline deadline and also uh we are recently we are recently exploring a mechanism called uh, load aware scheduling and rescheduling so uh, as you know that uh, today actually kubernetes uh, not uh, kind of uh, uh, take all type of resources into consideration, and especially for the uh, for the for the long running workloads, and also on like the compute uh, high uh, compute in intensive workloads, uh, we always try to kind of spread uh, the instances, right? So. Uh, with the the load aware scheduling, we we are kind of try to take the different aspect of resources into consideration. For example, uh, on node one and the node two, uh, even though they may have kind of uh, equivalent available resources uh, from the CPU perspective or uh, from the a memory perspective, but we uh, detected that can, uh, the node one is uh, it's under higher pressure from like the uh, the network perspective. The scheduler will uh, prefer to schedule a workload to node three. Uh, and also, uh, as we know, that data analysis is a key factor in the intelligent application. So uh, how to leverage native uh, techniques and uh, Spark to handle the more efficient, efficiently is a very uh, interesting topic. As we all uh, know that uh, actually Spark began uh, to support Kubernetes from uh, 2.3 in 2017. Actually, it started uh, very early. However, for uh, during a long period of time, uh, the Spark on Kubernetes lacks of batch scheduling uh, uh, functionality. Only pod-based scheduling is supported. So during uh, 2019 and 2020, uh, Volcano integrated with uh, Spark operator and also a Flink operator to provide the job-based uh, batch scheduling. 
in uh, 2022, actually, a Volcano and a Spark contributors worked together to uh, support the batch scheduling for uh, Spark. And uh, with that, a Volcano became the first batch scheduler in uh, Spark uh, 3.3, .3, uh, which provides uh, job-based scheduling capabilities, such as uh, job priority, a job queue and also uh, fair sharing among jobs like that. Uh, so uh, how to use it? Uh, actually, in, in Spark, you can easily enable it by specifying these uh, parameters when you submit a, a job. Uh, you, you just need to uh, specify the uh, scheduler na name with uh, to make it uh, Make sure it gets scheduler uh, get scheduled by Volcano Scheduler, and uh, prepare a, a job group uh, template uh, in, in which you can fill the required parameters for batch scheduling, such as um, the job priority and the uh, name of the queue. Then uh, the Volcano will uh, do the rest of the work. Uh, actually, we, we uh, so far we have in, uh, uh, implemented a lot of uh, 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 scheduling algorithm. Um, yeah, I, I won't uh, introduce them in, into details, and uh, we all have uh, documents on our GitHub. You're welcome to uh, to dig into more details. Details. And also, uh, uh, recently, uh, to provide better uh, user experience, especially for people uh, are trying to uh, migrate from traditional batch system to uh, to a volcano, uh, we provide like uh, the command line. As you can see, the the volcano we have the visa v cancel uh, commands, uh, which is kind of very you know, similar to uh, like some great engine, uh, so the other systems. Uh, we also uh, provide official uh, uh, SDK support for uh, multiple uh, uh, languages. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it makes it easier uh, for you to uh, develop your, your own uh, uh, kind of uh, application on top of it. Uh, I uh, let me just uh, also briefly um, go through a little bit the uh, use case. So the uh, one is the the ING, the International Netherlands Group. Um, uh, they provide uh, services in uh, more than forty countries, and its core business are uh, banking, uh, insurance, and uh, asset management. Uh, during the application of uh, for native infrastructure uh, uh, and the process of creating a new generation of uh, big data analysis self uh, service platform, the the critical challenges uh, ING facing are uh, how to uh, unify the interactive services. Also, uh, the resident services and the offline uh, big data uh, workloads into one platform. Um, how and how also how to provide fair, uh, you know, resource allocation to ensure uh, business SLA between uh, different type of uh, workloads, and uh, how to uh, maxim maxim maximize the resource utilization through. Uh, the resource uh, reuse, the resource sharing mechanism, and how to uh, increase the uh, response speed using uh, when using the preemption uh, functionality for uh, you know the key business, the key uh, type of workloads, and uh, uh, so uh, with the uh, volcanoes uh, uh, scheduling uh, strategies. And the, the 
you know, the optimization, optimization the deep integration with Spark. Uh, ING uh, is able to migrate their uh, the workloads from Yarn to Kubernetes. And uh, the DAP, the data analysis platform, uh, based on the cloud native infrastructure, has been applied to uh, their uh, 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 more than uh, 17 uh, regions uh, with uh, almost uh, uh, 1,000 users. And uh, actually, the number uh, keeps growing. And uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, projects that uh, operating on uh, running on top of DAP also uh, goes to more than uh, 450. Kevin, just one quick thing. Yeah. If we want to leave some mm -hmm. 10 minutes for questions, uh, I think we have like two, three minutes more and then maybe leave some space for questions to, to wrap it up at six. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so other kind of uh, use case are uh, similar, just that uh, their, their workload type are a little bit different. Yeah. And also today, uh, Volcano actually, you know, provide also the equivalent uh, functionality ability to deal with uh, uh, the services, uh, the microservices. So make them uh, able to uh, run together on one platform. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and also as you can see, there are already a lot of adopters using uh, Volcano. Yeah, uh, that's almost the, the uh, uh, what I introduced today. Any questions? All right, awesome. That was pretty good. Uh, we can open for questions. Any anyone come forward or drop it in the chat as you prefer. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the uh, talk. I have a question about the resource management. So, so for the volcano, can you uh, uh, prioritize the resource? For our case, if we are running on cloud environment, we have the spot VM, we have a regular VM, we have a different price. I'm not sure this is the in scope of the, the, the volcano where you are thinking this should be handled by a different uh, uh, system or component. Okay. So when the job comes- uh, You mean, uh, you mean the, the underlying resource, they have different kind of- uh, the priority or pricing we want to always uh, pick up the cheaper one yeah so this is some of our challenge yeah, yeah uh, actually uh, this is uh, possible to deal with volcano actually uh, uh, because, uh, uh, um, because you can kind of define uh, priority define the uh, the scheduling uh, preference uh, from the resource perspective, so it's like uh, I always try a set of nodes uh, first, or or with a higher priority than the other set of nodes. Yeah, that's possible to 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 do. Yeah. Thank you. And also, actually, we we have been uh, discussing with one of the end users. So they are trying to, uh, you know, deal with uh, different type of GPUs. So they have like uh, H100 and A100. For some of the business team, they want to uh, always uh, try allocate the H100 first, uh, and the other team uh, have the they have the higher priority. Uh, they will directly go uh, to try with the uh, uh, A100. Yeah, so uh, so uh, you are able to uh, config uh, that uh, preference with uh, within Volcano. Yes. OK, 
Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Pierce, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to, I mean, you had some use cases there or examples. I was just wondering if you had any illustrative examples of migration from using um, Slurm based MPI workload management to Volcano. Um, you know, whether, whether that you, you know, there's anything written up about that that, that would provide some good context. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I think uh, MPI, we already uh, provide support, uh, just uh, not uh, many people uh, share their uh, story in the, in the community. Uh, but we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, evaluated most of the use cases. So for MPI, uh, we think it's, uh, it's very easy. Um, for Sloan, uh, we are still uh, investigating because uh, uh, Sloan, there are a uh, little bit more uh, issues we need to uh, deal with, we need to resolve. So Sloan, uh, uh, not yet, but we are uh, 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 kind of uh, looking at the uh, solution. Okay. So yeah, because one of one of the one of the catches, uh, well, I see in here for years. Oh, but Slurm um, has you know out of the box integration for Singularity, um, and you know so you, you, to my mind, you know if we if we're going to move truly to a, sort of a more of a cloud native pattern, then we've got we've got to find an answer to that. We've also got to find a migration path for people who are used to scheduling jobs through Slurm, um, you know, to something like Volcano or you know, or whatever else is chosen. And and so you've got to, you know, you've, you've got to answer those kind of questions because at, at the end of the day, it, it tends to be the most, you know, the the most demanding requirements come from you know from the science side you know where where people are used to interacting with a platform in one particular way and you, you kind of need to find a, a bridge for them somewhere yeah uh, i think one of the um topic we are kind of discussing and they're still uh, uh still thinking about this like the two level scheduling and the, the topic is uh, actually have been uh discussing for a period of uh, time already uh, in, even in the early days it's like uh, slurm have its own uh, has its own scheduling and uh, if uh, 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 we are kind of think uh, also uh, thinking maybe the the easy way is you know just to try to uh, deploy slurm on top of kubernetes and uh, you know like uh, make uh, take uh, the Kubernetes pod as kind of a, a node for Slurm, and uh, and uh, uh, Volcano try to kind of uh, get information, more information, more details about how Slurm uh, is dealing with uh, their uh, its workloads, and if there's any uh, uh, pressure, we need to kind of help scale out or uh, or uh, the schedule specific uh, to deal with the location part, um, but but not yet uh, decided because it's not uh, you know uh, that native as we expected. Yeah, so we are still uh, thinking about the solution. Thank you. I think we have time for one more. Uh, that were enough. I saw. Do you, do you want to ask directly? Uh, I think yeah. Thank you. I think I have answer from the previous question. I was just wondering, uh, when it comes to this uh, resource scheduling uh, of the HPC cluster, uh, or is it like um, is Volcano running on top of a uh, Slurm, or is just directly running on top of a uh, uh, bare metal, like uh, Kubernetes, which is running on a bare metal? Yeah, um, so for Volcano, uh, as you can see today, we, we kind of provide 
actually the scheduler as well as the uh, controller to deal with uh, the like queue job and also like job flow, flow and the pod group. So basically, um, the 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 deployment model is really you know uh, same with Kubernetes. You can think uh, Volcano just uh, have some extra uh, components running uh, together with uh, Kubernetes. So uh, it really depends on how you want to run uh, Kubernetes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Another question. But then I will sneak in one because we still have three minutes. Uh, you mentioned uh, IO aware scheduling at some point. Mm -hmm. How do, how does that yes. work? How how is the is this exposed somehow on the topology of the cluster, or how, how does the scheduler know about how to optimize the jobs to where the IO would be? ideal um so uh so actually this one uh, for the i uh, the load aware we need to uh, integrate with uh, prometheus and the user need to kind of uh right. you know, identify what kind of uh, uh resources they they want to uh, observe and uh, so basically volcano will kind of uh, take all the resources into consideration to kind of uh, check uh, different pressure, the pressure degree of different nodes. And so basically yeah. it, it, it adjusts the kind of score of different nodes. Right, I, I didn't mean high load, I meant IO. Uh, I think in the previous slide you were talking about uh, optimization oh, for, oh, for the data. I don't remember. It was before. Um, oh, yeah, this one. You still mean? before. I think uh, still before. Right. Oh, yeah, test topology IO aware scheduling. Um, how do, how does that you, you mentioned minimize trans transmission delay and improve performance for IO intensive applications? So how it's done. Uh, actually, uh, so this one is that uh, because you know, like uh, in TensorFlow, the worker always need to kind of talk to one of the parameter server, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, like uh, in the example, uh, if we kind of have, uh, you know, multiple parameter server in one, uh, in, in one of the node, uh, while a lot of uh, worker node in, in the other nodes or rack, they are kind of, uh, they have a longer, you know, network path to communicate. So, so uh, in Volcano, we we are kind of uh, uh, automatically uh, detecting the the parameter server relationship between the weather uh, the the worker node to uh, to make it uh, 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 scheduled uh, separate uh, separately spreadly uh, among uh, so basically spread the parameter servers. Uh, onto different nodes, so make sure uh, the worker are able to uh, to find a parameter server that is uh, in the same node or in the same branch. But actually, but for uh, from the network uh, network perspective, uh, uh, there's some extra work need to be done to you know exactly. make sure the worker talk to the nearest parameter server. Okay, yeah. yeah, I guess that was my question. Like, uh, also, I guess you label nodes with things like the rack or something like that, and then use mm -hmm. those labels for scheduling. Makes sense. Yes. All right, a nice three hour. So uh, um, thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, this was super interesting. Uh, we will continue with uh, the topic of batch uh, the next time, so in two weeks. Uh, Still not confirmed that we might get another presentation in this topic. Uh, just a quick reminder: I, I mentioned this at the start before recording. But uh, if we, uh, if you have suggestions for topics to be covered next and speakers, uh, please reach out uh, and we'll, we'll chase them. So thank you very much again, Kevin, and um, 
we can follow it up Thank on you. the Slack channel as well if you have additional questions for Kevin. Thank you. Have a nice uh, evening or day, everyone. Talk soon. Thanks, Kevin. That was great. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Ricardo, for organizing. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.